When we created the sustainable railway strategy document, it included on the project lists a couple of large diesels, for, particularly for the Welsh Island Railway, but ideally for both railways. Uh, that was to replace or support the funky diesels that we have on our fleet. As it happened, it became the last thing on the list and we never did manage to create those diesels. But now, uh, maybe that was the right way to go because now I think it's probable that we will end up seeing some kind of electric locomotives in our fleet in place of those planned diesels. We will see. But what it does mean is that the funky diesels are very important to us at this time. We need them to be available because they are the locomotives which act as the standby for the Welsh Island Railway or standbys for the Welsh Island Railway in particular. For the last five years Carnarvon Castle, Castor Carnarvon, has been out of traffic. It has been a prolonged overhaul and probably half of that time has been general time delay has been generated by COVID. It's been very frustrating. We couldn't get to the locomotive to complete it. But now in November 2022, the locomotive is complete and has been delivered back to Dinas and is back in traffic. And that's very helpful just in time uh, to help with the winter program where we, we need practically every diesel locomotive we can lay our hands on. So here it is back in traffic. Um, wearing the uh, green and uh, gold livery, uh, which I'm told reflects its South African origins. And um, <clears throat> there's quite a lot that's happened to the locomotive. Some years ago, I recall that the wiring system caught fire. Um, it was repaired, but it was a repair, not a replacement, and it was never uh, truly happy. Also, the cab of the locomotive, made of fibreglass, was breaking up. Not on the bigger sections of fibreglass, but in all the little bits where things like the doors and windows were connected and where it screwed down onto the body. So everywhere that was important was all breaking away and it had become untenable to continue using it. But how to replace it? We looked at different designs, different ideas and concluded in the end that it what was there was actually a very good design. And so uh, Bob Yates set to with the CAD uh, drawing system and copied the cab that was on the locomotive, but instead of making out of fiberglass, he adjusted it to make it possible to make it out of stainless steel, which is what you see here behind me now. And I'm sure you'll agree he's done an excellent job of keeping all the lines that were present in the original cab. Very important actually because the style of these locomotives, uh, love them or loathe them, personally I think they're, they're, they're quite attractive, uh, but this style of this locomotive, much of it comes from the lines in the cab, they're very, they're very important to the overall look. So I think he's to be congratulated on keeping that look. So Carnarvon Castle back in traffic and just in time because Vale of Festiniog, as we shall see, is in a much less uh, happy state. So here we have uh, the, one of the stalwarts of the Welsh Island Fleet, uh, Bay Garrett number 138. Uh, this came out of traffic just before Covid and uh, was expect to be, expected to be turned round and to be the next engine in traffic. Um, but as we now know that didn't happen and 143 went back into traffic ahead of 138. So what of 138 then? Well, <clears throat> 138 currently sits on the power units from 143. They're five years into um, their 10-year uh, uh, overhaul period. So about every 10 years we'll overhaul the power units. These would have done about five years in service. So they're operable and could be used under any of the Garrets in an emergency. But at the moment they're holding up the cradle frame of 138. So uh, the plan is that those power units will be gently overhauled, given a light overhaul in the coming years and uh, be ready for further service under 138. Boiler wise, this boiler, 138's boiler, has done several uh, rounds of service, several 10-year uh, uh, stints, and is to be replaced. 
there's nothing wrong with it. We will overhaul it and refit it, but at the moment it will go off into the spare boiler pool uh, until we, uh, we need to uh, use it again. So this one will come off and the boiler that was fitted to 143 when it first arrived in the UK is being overhauled at Israel Newtons and will be fitted on this loco. We expect that to return to us probably in 2024. Meanwhile, our volunteers, particularly the ones that work at Dinas on Tuesdays, are working to strip the cladding and the cab off the old boiler, get back down to basics and get ready for the boiler swap. So it's a, a slow burn project where we're overhauling all the components, valves, uh, all the back end fittings and so on, ready for it all to come back together when we need it. Now we're not quite sure when we all need it, but it is on about a two year time frame. That's what we have in our mind at the moment. It could be accelerated if needed, but having a two year time frame means that it will stagger the boiler overhaul periods of the garrets so that they don't all come together. So that's probably what we will do, but there is some flexibility in that. So this is locomotive number 143, uh, newly outshopped, and uh, this it represents about £350,000 worth of work. So 143 had done two lots of uh, 10 years in service, and a heck of a lot of miles in that time, typically 10,000 miles a year. So we're probably nudging up to the couple of hundred thousand miles uh, mark, uh, working on the modern day Welsh island and it was very tired and so what we've done is we've overhauled the locomotive uh, it has already got a new tank and bunker from a previous uh, overhaul so they're in good condition the boiler however was very tired and uh, the boiler from this has gone into the spares pool. It's the boiler X uh, locomotive number 140. That's gone to the spares pool. And this boiler last saw service on locomotive number 129 in Africa. That locomotive ended up at the Puffing Billy Railway in Australia and they didn't want and couldn't use the riveted boiler. So one of our sponsors very kindly paid for the boiler to be uh, shipped back from Australia here to the Welsh Island Railway. And the Puffing Billy Railway very kindly gave us the boiler. So uh, we received a boiler, but that was the only the beginning of the story. The boiler had been given a comprehensive overhaul at Locomotive Maintenance Services in Loughborough. And now it's back here and fitted to the loco. The power units under this locomotive last saw service in loco number 138. They were the most tired and worn out units of any of them within our fleet. And indeed the rear cylinder on the fireman's side behind me uh, had cracked and was leaking and so has been replaced. So they've had a very thorough overhaul during lockdown and so when our fitters were um, being supported by the Welsh Government uh, funding and by the members funding, some of the work that they had done was on these power units. In total, this has cost about £350,000 to give a full, comprehensive 10-year overhaul, perhaps better... Perhaps I could better call it a 20-year overhaul, because at 10 years, often the boiler needs some work but by the time you get to 20 years and a couple of hundred thousand miles, there's a lot of work to be done. So this engine, now back in traffic, but unfortunately had an incident where there was a collision uh, with a car on a crossing near Beth Gellert. Um, I think that's been well covered in the press and whatever, but uh, poor old uh, 143 bears the scars here. And so during the course of this winter, we'll have to repaint part of her once again and deal with a few uh, mechanical issues before she's ready to see traffic next year. But she will be in traffic next year and um, she'll no doubt be uh, the, the locomotive that underpins most of the, the services. Yeah. Now, 
should never really say that, should I? Because whenever you say it, it doesn't happen. <laughs> so this is Loco 87. It's uh, a couple of years into uh, its uh, current boiler ticket. And um, it's been uh, the highest mileage engine in the, in the fleet last year. And uh, second highest mileage after 130 this year. Um, done a lot of miles, but for those of you who are looking a little more closely, you would notice that the front unit uh, always seemed to be surrounded by steam. And that's because there's a leak uh, between the, um, the cylinders and the steam chest. And uh, we couldn't get to it while the loco was in traffic. So we've had to soldier on with a leak that's got slightly worse as the season has progressed. But now, hopefully, we should get it all sorted. So in order to get to that, we've lifted the front of the engine, taken the front unit out. The, the tank will be coming off shortly, and that should give access to the place where the, uh, the packing has broken and, uh, and the leak is, uh, leak is coming out. And here we have the front of locomotive 87 and <clears throat> the effort on this bit now is simply to do the annual boiler exam. So that means taking out all the washout plugs, cleaning out the firebox, cleaning out the smoke box, removing the dome so that there's good access for the boiler inspector to do his annual cold exam. We'll then put it all back together again, fill it with water and it will have its steam exam. So not a massive amount of maintenance needed on 87 this year, few bits and pieces and dealing with that, uh, that steam leak. Good afternoon from Linus, from the MG15 working party this weekend. Quick update on the loco. Um, the chassis you can see here in the good shed at Linus. We have continued to work on the braking system and the lubrication system on the chassis in the last couple of months. The boiler has unfortunately been delayed in its return due to quality problems with a set of smoke tubes uh, and they have to be replaced by the manufacturer. However, uh, great news last week, the boiler passed its steam test with the inspector and it is due back to us next week. So pretty soon we hope to put, put the boiler on the chassis here and move the, the loco back into the workshop where we are working on the tender um, as per the previous updates. Uh, more of that in a moment. So here we are in the main workshop at Dinas with the tender. We've lifted the tank off the underframe again at this working party. We've done quite a lot of fabrication work on the front of the tender with the water supply for the injectors and also the cold shoveling plate from the bunker which we're modifying and we've also been working on the underframe, on the brake gear and on the flange lubrication which we'll install on the rear bogey um, so that it lubricates the flanges for the train when the loco is leading a train downhill. So here we are at uh, Boston Lodge Works for our loco roundup but uh, Anybody visiting Boston Lodge at the moment cannot fail to notice all the work that's going on related to the National Lottery Heritage Fund project. Um, this is 14 phases of work at Boston Lodge funded by both the Festiniog and Welsh Island Railways Trust, Festiniog Railway Society and of course the National Lottery Heritage Fund. Uh, the main contractors have started on site so things are really starting to happen and uh, here for example once there stood a wall. It's been here for a long time and it had to go as part of the, uh, the plans to redevelop the yard. And uh, the contractors have taken away all the stone in this wall uh, to reuse in some of the new buildings that are being created on the, on the site. And uh, this location is in the top yard. You can see the quarry wall behind me, newly revealed. And, um, and here will be the training center. So the building that goes just in front of me will be the place where we can uh, teach in new skills um, and we can run things like mutual improvement classes, lectures and so on. They can all work in this, uh, what will be a clean dry space, which will have a splendid glass window, which will allow you to look into the blacksmith shop, uh, which is currently uh, blanked off by this temporary wall. But the... Uh, there will be a glass wall there and the rails here will remain uh, so that Britomart and friends uh, can park here when necessary and you'll be able to see them from the training centre. Not only that, uh, behind here will be a palletised storage um, system so that when things arrive, uh, deliveries to Boston Lodge, they'll be able to be picked up by the forklift truck and put on some great big shelves 
tucked out of the way behind the heritage building. So heritage looking buildings, modern uh, interiors and doing a job that helps the works today. I think that will do for the moment. Now we'll go and look at some locomotives. This is Upner Castle, uh, a long-standing FR loco that needs little introduction, a star performer in the infrastructure fleet and often seen shunting and doing the, uh, the runs with the coal wagons between Minforth and, uh, Minforth and Port Maddock. It's just arrived here in the back of uh, number two road at Boston Lodge where the team of volunteers known as the Reynolds Gang are doing a little number on it for us. The fluid flywheel that takes the drive from the engine to the gearbox has become damaged and overheated. And so th these guys are very kindly removing the fluid flywheel and uh, replacing it with one which was previously uh, used in Conway Castle and uh, has been sent away for overhaul. So what will happen now is this fluid flywheel will be fitted, the old one will come out, that will go away to be refurbished and then that one will probably end up back in Conway Castle. I expect it to take about a week, fingers crossed. Also, there's some work going on on the brake gear, uh, which has never been satisfactory ever since the locomotive was regaged to two foot gauge. So a few modifications there, week or two's work, should be good as new. Uh, this is, of course, Linda, uh, which was taken apart uh, for 10 year overhaul, uh, just around the time that we were shutting down because of COVID. Um, the boiler for Linda is complete and ready to go back into the frames, but the frames had been waiting their chance to come into the workshops for overhaul. Uh, they have been here for about six months now, and there's quite a lot of work gone on. John Wally gave an update in one of the previous um, uh, moving pictures updates. And here we are in uh, just approaching December 2022. The cylinders we now find are at the end of their life, although we are able to use them just one more time. Next time round, we're going to have to replace them. That'll be the subject of a separate appeal, no doubt. It's got new pistons in that will cope with the worn bores there. But all the slide bars, horn, bo horn blocks, axle boxes, rod end bearings have all been worked on. Valve gear all coming back together now. Some slight modifications to the valve gear um, as a result of doing some modelling with, uh, uh, with uh, the computer uh, aided by one of our volunteers. Um, so some changes hopefully to improve the valve event slightly. But the general story is the loco is now coming back together and we should see it in the new year with the boiler in the frames and start to do the big reassembly job. Whilst the work has been going on on the loco chassis. The tender two has had a lot of attention. Uh, that includes a new water tank, new coal space, uh, and a very heavy overhaul. Let's just say that. However, the tender body, which was originally part of Welsh Pony's tender body, um, has been saved and will 
will be used again. So to the uh, unknowing eye, Linda will look exactly the same. However, its tender is massively overhauled and uh, will be a whole lot better as a result of that. Taliesin's boiler has returned to the erecting shop and is having a lot of attention now on the stays. All of the stays in this boiler are being replaced. At the moment it's a job which we're picking up and putting down as time permits and the volunteer team who work on Taliesin are doing some of the work and some of it is being done by the paid staff. Probably once Linda is out and in traffic and we've broken the back of the work on James Spooner then Taliesin will come closer to the front line and uh, hopefully we'll see this next year too but it may be 2024. It's been a while since we spoke about James Spooner I think probably a year since uh, we last did an update on the loco. It's coming on loops and bounds now it's back in the erecting shop and the big effort has been on the cab as you can see. The cab is a very complicated piece of work and uh, that's demonstrated just by looking at just things like the beading and the handrails all of which take hours and hours to hand make. These things don't just pop out of a CNC machine they need to be carefully made carefully finished so you get the, the right look. Imagine if you will for a moment just what it takes to bend this piece of metal to the right shape and to fit it to the loco. For days and days of work. Uh, Bob Yates has spent uh, quite a long time on this in the last few months, diligently putting all this together. Uh, in other shots, you'll see uh, pictures of the whistle and bell assemblies. Uh, now things like water gauges, valves and fittings are, are all turning up uh, to be fitted onto the loco. So you can feel that we're approaching that those final stages, still a long way to go. It takes a lot of time to do all the pipe work and making it all fit, put it together, take it apart and so on. Hopefully at some point towards the middle of next year, we should see this engine on its power units and uh, going into the final stages, testing, painting, commissioning. Long way to go yet though, just depends on how much workload we've got on the winter maintenance and what other things we find with other locos. Uh, but in broad terms, we hope that 2023 will be the year of James Spooner. OK, so these uh, strange looking fabrications that surround James Spooner are in fact bogey frames for the Talaflin railway carriages for which we've got a contract to build three. So you'll see dotted around the works parts for six bogies. Little Pet project, Velin Heli's new boiler uh, continues to make gentle but uh, persistent progress. Uh, now we are continuing to work on the last stages really of the outer shell uh, before we put the firebox in. Part of that has been making the longitudinal stays. These go from one end of the firebox to the other in the water space and some of the longer ones go from one end of the firebox right through to the front tube plate. Uh, these pieces of metal, <clears throat> they're stays which are narrow in the middle but have to be fatter at the ends and then threaded. They are made not by machining down a, a bar and taking the metal off but rather taking a bar of this size and then heating up the ends and squashing them and doing a thing called upsetting which increases the diameter of the bar at the ends so they're fatter to put on a bigger, stronger thread. This then creates a stay, which is held in a boiler like this. It's thinner in the middle, which allows a little bit of flexibility. Obviously, I can't bend it, um, but it does allow a little bit of flexibility. If it had the same thickness all the way through, there is a risk that it would be too strong, too brittle, and might break. So very important that they're the right shape, and they've taken a tremendous amount of effort in uh, creating these in the last couple of months. And again, we're very grateful to Bob Yates, who has put a lot of effort into devising a way of, of doing that. When will Velin Heli be done? Hard to say, but hopefully, hopefully we'll see some really solid progress in 2023. Who knows, maybe even a steam test in that year. So uh, a bit of a, a rapid fire section, really, as we come into the uh, locomotive shed. Um, all a bit cold. Unusual, feels strange not to have a hot steam engine in here at the moment, but uh, there we are. So, 
Um, to my right is Welsh Pony, and very simply, in great condition, all working well, no problems with Welsh Pony, just needs to go through the usual winter maintenance and will be in traffic again next year. To my left is Merthyn Emery's, and in the last of the locomotive roundup videos, John Wally reminded us of the problems that we'd suffered last year with uh, cracking in uh, the boilerplate in a most unusual way. Um, I think we'll be keeping this prop for a, for a long time. It's a very interesting piece, but that's part of the inner firebox of Merthyn Emery's that had, that had cracked. Now, what happened was that last winter we did the overhaul work on both Merthyn Emery's and David Lloyd George and had them both ready for traffic at the beginning of season. And we thought that's very good. We're in a very good position. We've got two double engines. By June, Merthyn Emery's had failed with this crack on the inner firebox. And that prompted a massive amount of work on the inner fireboxes of the loco. So the loco was stripped to give access, great chunks of the inner firebox taken out and replaced with new metal. Um, I'm, indebted to the fitters who work through the hottest days of the year for six weeks actually working on the boiler to re repair it and finally Merthyn Emery's came back into traffic uh, around the end of August so missed all of the the peak season during which time of course David Lloyd George sh shouldered the, uh, the the principal loads on the railway so perhaps it was good that we that we had two in place, otherwise we would have been in trouble. But Merthyn is now in good shape and we're not expecting to do anything other than its annual boiler exam and light maintenance this winter. Uh, this is Linda's boiler, all uh, hydraulically tested and waiting to go in the frames of the loco, which we looked at uh, next door just a, a few moments ago. But more importantly at the moment for this, behind us is David Lloyd George. What, I hear you say? That's not David Lloyd George, that's an African bee wagon. Well, actually, yes, it is David Lloyd George, because at the end of the season, we took David Lloyd George out of traffic and have stripped it to reveal its boiler. Why? Well, it's at year nine of 10 years of its boiler ticket, and we've been struggling with it with cracked stays. We continue to have problems with stays. We had problems last winter where we stripped it, replaced some of the stays, put it back together, and then it's run all summer. But during the summer, we've found a couple more stays that have cracked. And it seems that um, it would be rather unwise to just presume that if we keep mending them a couple at a time, that that's a sensible way to progress. We're worried that um, something will happen where another stay breaks and we'll have to stop the loco. So rather than run the risk of that, we've made the decision to do the 10-year boiler overhaul a year early. Now that's really quite a challenge for us because we hadn't planned to do this boiler overhaul until next year and there's not much of a space in our works program to fit it in. However, because we worked quickly immediately after the bygones weekend and our fitters have taken the locomotive apart, the boiler as I speak right now, is on a lorry going to Israel Newton's up in, uh, in the northern bit of Derbyshire, um, where we'll be working with um, uh, the Newton's team to get the boiler retubed and completely restayed in readiness for use again next year. So we hope that that will be a reasonably rapid job. We put more resource on it. We're working in partnership with Israel Newtons, so some of our fitters will go there at times to help them in addition to their own people. So we're hoping that in the very early spring of 2023, DLG's boiler will return, we'll reassemble the locomotive and hope to see it in traffic once more next year. So lid has been used quite a bit this year and particularly in the autumn once we've taken David Lloyd George out of traffic. Um, it was also very useful on the cretlin services on the Welsh Highland in the, in the peak season. Um, little needed this winter, just the annual maintenance and a bit of work on the pins and bushes in the valve gear and then she's good to go for another year. The England engines have seen a lot of use in the last three years. In, hasn't it been wonderful to see all three, Prince, Palmerston and Welsh Pony, in traffic sometimes even 
triple heading working together. But this year, Prince and Palmerston come to the end of their 10 year ticket and are now withdrawn from service. Prince was last used in September and Palmerston uh, used on photographic charters uh, in November. So both of these locos now withdrawn. Palmerston will um, be stored for a few years, uh, waiting its turn. Prince is already in store at Glanapuff, but as a result of the uh, generous donations that we've received on our trains and from our members and from those who are working on the photo charters uh, with us, uh, we now have over £50,000 in the bank towards Prince's overhaul. So it's likely that towards the tail end of 2023, we'll have raised sufficient funds for Prince to make a start on the work of the 10-year overhaul of that one. Now, <clears throat> I say this, uh, we are not quite sure at the moment how much work Prince will need. We know that the boiler is one of the older ones in the fleet, and uh, it's the one that was... Uh, used by uh, the early preservationists at the FR in those, uh, those days in the early 50s. The boiler was new and left in the works ready to be fitted and it's still that boiler and it probably needs quite a bit of work this time round. We also know that the saddle tank on Prince is in the worst condition of any of the England engines so we fully expect to strip that and replace a lot of metal in it uh, during the course of this overhaul uh, which also of course will require uh, a full chassis uh, overhaul as well. As we approach the winter period uh, we're ever mindful that we live next to the sea and the effect of the salt air on the steam engines is considerable so what's going on here is that the rods of the locomotive are being uh, polished up to take off any specks of rust and, uh, and, and staining from, uh, from oil residue and then they're being coated in uh, wax oil. It's the kind of stuff you use on the underneath of your car actually to prevent it corrosion. But the wax oil goes on and that then sticks to the rods and stops them going rusty. Um, being made of wax, when the engine gets heated up again next time, it's uh, quite easy to get it back off. Uh, but while it's cold and in the shed, it, it sticks in place on the rods. The brass work on the locomotive is cleaned off and then covered with Vaseline as being the most effective way to stop it tarnishing. It's normal to find Lilla, Hugh Napier and Britomart at the back of the shed, uh, with the mainline engines being nearer the doors, ready to go out each day. Uh, now this winter, a bit of role reversal there because Lilla, Hugh Napier and indeed Britomart are all being uh, pressed into service for our uh, Christmas uh, Santa trains and the like and a number of works trains, so they're nearer to the door. So they're kept in traffic over the winter. Um, they are coated in uh, Vaseline and oil and so on to stop them going rusty, but they do, um, they do get used once or twice a month for, for works trains, which is really, really pleasing to see. So, one of the longest running sagas in Festiniog railway history is that of Lilla's injectors. I think uh, we've made videos about this on a number of occasions, as John reminds me. So, where are we? Well, the old injectors on Lilla uh, were original, or well, certainly one on this side was an original Hunslet injector and it was very difficult to operate. Some days it would work, if you'd got the knack it helped, but you couldn't always guarantee that that would be the case. And so we set out and made new injectors for it to the original pattern. This was an amazing exercise involving uh, making patterns, castings, and having special reamers made to ream the cones in the injector body. Having completed that, <coughs> we fitted the new injector, or certainly the, the one on this side of the locomotive, and were found that it worked exactly the same as the previous one, i.e. not particularly reliably. You needed to have a knack, it was quite a challenge to operate. Now, this is a problem for us, because we would dearly love to see Lilla being used uh, by young people and newcomers to the railway who are taking their first steps in gaining footplate experience. I think uh, it would be fair to say that the Lilla group 
uh, has always seen it as being one of their aims to help different and new people get involved with the, with the row and the engines. So when you have an injector that doesn't work, it can be very depressing for the people involved, very stressful in fact, uh, and not particularly conducive to learning. So we felt that we needed to do something about it. But Lilla is a highly original locomotive. Much of its uh, original material remains in place and uh, it has the feel of uh, a traditional quarry locomotive. So we didn't want to just put on any new parts and we thought long and hard about how we could do this. And so the, the Boston Lodge fitting team have come up with a plan which means that you can have the old injectors on and working and it would look uh, as it traditionally did or we can put this new injector on. We can swap from one to the other. So this is a, a standard Gresham and Craven number no. five size as used on Prince, uh, Taliesin, Linda and Blanche. They've all got this particular model of injector on. Um, it's a more modern one with a moving cone in it, which means it's easier to restart, easier to work, pick up, etc. So that's being grafted on very carefully. Um, and none of the valves, fittings, or anything else have changed. So uh, the old ones can just go straight, straight back in. So it's something that we can swap and keep the engine original. But what it does mean is that hopefully, from this winter onwards, it'll have a new fireman side injector that's much more reliable and is easier for everybody to use. If there was an engine of the year in 2022, I think it would have to be Blanche. Dear old Blanche, actually some people say it's engine of the year every year, and I find it difficult to argue with that. But uh, Blanche has done a prodigious mileage on the Woodland, Woodland Wanderer services. Unfortunately, she's now got leaking tubes, <coughs> and um, it's uh, quite an interesting mode of failure that we're experiencing. Uh, it first happened last year and we had to replace a tube and uh, it happened again earlier this year. We replaced a couple of tubes, but towards the end of the season, more tubes started to leak. And what's happening is, is that we are getting pinholes of corrosion in the tubes, uh, which just allow a little bit of steam through and then of course the engine has to stop. Now we thought it was just the odd one or two tubes that affected, so we were happy to change the odd one or two, but as it now persistently happens, the time has come to say, no, let's stop doing that and replace all of the tubes. The boiler is uh, just halfway through its 10 year uh, ticket cycle. So we won't be stripping the entire engine. We will be just retubing it in situ, which is not a very nice job, I must say. It's uh, a cramped space to, to work in. Uh, but we re will retube it and put it back in traffic. But not long after we've done that, the next job uh, will be to do the chassis overhaul. Just like Linda, uh, Blanche is quite tired. The chassis uh, got a lot of wear in it now, and so we need to work on that. Where we've stripped Linda right down to the chassis, Blanche will be uh, lifted on the four-way jacks and the work will be done from underneath. So I don't think we'll be seeing a whole lot of Blanche in 2023, but maybe just odd bits of operation here or there. And hopefully, fingers crossed, Linda will uh, take her place in terms of being the high mileage Festiniog engine for 2023. Loco 130 has been our highest mileage Garrett this year. Um, she's done really well and uh, it's been a pleasure and indeed a relief to have her as part of the, uh, the Welsh Island Railway fleet. She's parked here at the moment at Boston Lodge in the carriage shed, not at Dinas. And the reason for that is that we've had a problem with the paintwork on the barrel cladding, on the boiler cladding. And so the loco is here and it's going to come back into uh, the workshops. The cladding is going to be uh, stripped off and it's going to be, uh, the barrel is going to be repainted. <clears throat> so a paint repair on the barrel to overcome some of the problems that we've had. It's just one of those things. It was painted in slightly damp condition and the paint hadn't quite adhered properly. So we're not going to let it go too far. We're going to grab it now, repaint it and keep her looking in tip top condition. Well, I know it's a carriage shed, uh, but at the moment, this end of the carriage shed seems to be our diesel shed. And 
What a pleasure it is actually to see all of our rolling stock under cover. Um, for many years, well for all the time that the Festinial Graui has been going in preservation, there's never been enough space to put everything under cover. And now in 2022 that's all changed because we've now got this large carriage shed and other storage sheds that we can use. Thank goodness. It'll make the world of difference to our railway. And what an impressive shed it is. But I'm here to talk just for a moment about the funky Vale of Festiniog. I think it fair to say it owes us nothing at the moment. Uh, this engine has soldiered on for a couple of extra years uh, where we were hoping to have Castell Carnarvon in traffic. It wasn't available so we kept using Vale of Festiniog. And it, we've known for some time it needed attention to its diesel engine. And uh, we just say, so we just hadn't managed to get to it. When we finally managed to get it apart, it, we found that it really is in a rather bad state. So we're working with a specialist who knows a lot about this particular kind of diesel engine. Um, as you can see, it's out of the locomotive at the moment. And we've got to do a lot of work, like replacing the camshaft, replacing the main bearings, uh, replacing the timing gears on the camshaft as well. Uh, all sorts of bits and pieces need to change. So we've got most of the spare parts, but when we took the engine apart, they found one or two more bits that we needed to source. It's an old Cummins engine. It's difficult to get the parts for now, but we do think we're going to be able to find them. So once... Uh, the, the engine is overhauled, it will be put back in place in the locomotive. Uh, we'll rebuild it and test it. And then we've got more work to do because the doors on the engine are corroded. The cabs are in a terrible state. So really a lot of body work to be done after that. But we'll do it a bit at a time as time permits. And it may be that it runs in 2023 looking a bit of a a patchwork quilt of new doors and old doors and bits and pieces. Um, but as long as we've got it able to move trains and to shunt with, that'll be fine. But ultimately we'd like to get it back into a, a much better state and, and repaint it. So here, whilst we're doing our loco roundup, here's another part of the NLHF project. This is the uh, small loco shed. Well, it's not so small actually. And just to say what you can see here, uh, at the rear of the site is a, a concrete wall and this wall is there to protect uh, the locos in the shed from falling rocks from the quarry face so you can see it's a very substantial piece of concrete and should the quarry face behind slip or cliff face behind slip then these walls will protect the locos and the shed from damage it's a rather big job making something like this the second thing you can see is a great big hole just in front of you. You may wonder what that's all about. Well, this is for the loco pit. So there is one inspection pit on one of the roads of the small loco shed. This is how much material has to be excavated in order to provide the uh, space to build a pit. So we build a, we, we make a big hole uh, then we shutter it all up, ready to uh, put concrete in uh, to make the form the pit and then backfill around the, around the sides of it. But this will make a space where it's easy to walk underneath the locomotives, service them and so on. And uh, I, I think it's fair to say that the rock that has been found on this site has been particularly tough and it's required some fairly heavy machinery in order to uh, work our way through into the ground to, to make this excavation. It's a challenging site as well because you can hear the water trickling away, it's coming off the cliff face, uh, going down under our yard and sheds and out to the sea. And of course when you excavate you very quickly find that uh, water table. And I don't think you can see it in the video but there's a pump extracting the water from the bottom of these excavations and just taking it out and off the site at the moment. But the pit that's installed will be uh, tanked or protected from water coming into the into the building. So uh, <clears throat> the water will stay on the on the outside of the uh, of the building uh, uh, once it's complete. So that concludes our loco roundup. No doubt, by the time that you're watching this, 
we'll have to work on something else as well because that's life with old steam engines isn't it but there we go and just to wish you all a very merry christmas and a happy new year <laughs>